Welcome. Today we're going to dig into DevonThink to Go. So that is the iOS, iPad OS, iOS 13, whatever version of DevonThink. DevonThink 3, I suppose, because DevonThink 3 is out now. We're specifically going to look at capture only today. I'm going to walk you through kind of every way that you can capture data that I found. I say that I found because there's so much to do. Maybe I missed something. Anyways, that's what we're going to dig into. So the first thing we're going to capture as we go through this is this web page, my bridge keyboard review, and you can just have a look at what we're going to get. And to capture things in DevonThink, you're going to go to the share sheet, you're going to go to clip to DevonThink, and we have a few things across the bottom. The three dots there in the oval is for tags. So I can add a tag in here, say bridge, scroll down. I have labels, so this is if you use labels. I don't actually use them, so whatever, the flag is to flag it, and the dot is to mark it as red or unread. And you can see it's also imported my um, excerpt from WordPress in there. And I can also so choose which inbox I want it in. I usually just stick with the global inbox. Then we have our five options. That's bookmark, web archive, web archive clutter-free, markdown, and markdown clutter-free. I've already captured these, so I'm just going to cancel out of this, and we'll take a look at what the difference is between them. I go to Dev and Think, and we'll start with Bookmark. This is kind of what it sounds like. This is a web bookmark. This is just showing me my web page in the Dev and Think browser. That's it. Um, it's got the URL in here. It's got you know the tag I put in um, when I did the save the first time, and that's really it, right? I doesn't have any labels, but I could edit them here, right? I could do labels again. I could flag it. I could mark it as red or unread. Then I also could lock it if I wanted. But I don't want to, so we'll just leave it as it is. So that's the first one. This is only usable if you're online. Next up is Markdown, clutter-free, and Markdown. So the difference here is with just the plain old Markdown, I've got my navigation at the top, and then if we go down, I've got my footer stuff too. You'll even see the pop-up. That's the HTML for the pop-up that is on the page. Now what Markdown gives me, though, is literal Markdown. So you can see my bridge 22, right? There's links at the bottom of this page. Let's go all the way to the bottom. There's my links. So this gives me markdown that I can edit. And markdown clutter free just applies the clutter free to it. I've still got all of my links in there. I've got um, the page. You can see that I have a decent font size for reading, which we'll come back to in a second. Now web archive. I've got web archive clutter free. That's what this one is. Now, notice the font is kind of small, but it did strip out like my navigation and all the other stuff that we don't need. So that's good. Um, yeah, font's a little small to read. That's why I actually prefer the oh, Markdown Clutter Free. The font is larger, right, between the two of them. And then we have our web archive. This is literally, literally a saved file of my page. Um, you can have view this offline. You can deal with this kind of however you want. It is yours now for good. So that's how we capture from the share sheet in Safari. Now, even with all those options, we do encounter a few pages that are problematic. So let's go to amazon.ca and I've got the Art of Focus already in there. That was, that's a book I wrote. And I'll view the page. So let's grab the page, just like I said I normally would. All right, I could tag it if I wanted again. And let's say we're going to grab it as a web archive which in theory should be saving the whole page. We'll go back over to Dev and Think and see what we get. That's not the whole page. That's not much at all, really. So what do I do in this case? We'll trash that and let's go back to this. The first thing I want to do is I want to highlight my title, copy it, and I'm going to go uh, save or create PDF. Now I have a PDF copy of it. And I'm going to share this PDF copy back to DevonThink. I'm going to paste in my title and I am done. I also want to make sure I delete the PDF and then I grab my text here. Now DevonThink for macOS will OCR this later, so I don't necessarily have to do this, but I like to have the comment with my full text as well. 
And so I'll go up to the little information and in the comments, I will paste the searchable, this is now the searchable book description. And then I will also hit copy and copy the URL of the book in there. So now I actually have something that I can search later. I usually put a tag as books to read in as well. And then Devin Think 3 for Mac OS will actually sort this into the proper binder for me so that I have it for later. Um, but this gives me like a fully searchable PDF. I actually would highlight and OCR anything in here. Next up, we have PDF research papers. So I have grabbed this off ResearchGate. You can see the link right near the top there. And it's pretty simple. I'm going to hit the share sheet again. I'm going to clip to Devon Think. I've got, you know, an OK title. And now you have bookmark or PDF. So bookmark is just going to save a link to where the file goes. Capture PDF is going to capture my whole PDF. And that's what I want. So I will capture the PDF. Let's capture the PDF. And then there you go. You can actually see this was my original copy of it before I was doing the recording here. And this is the new copy of it. And in here, what I have is, again, my full link to the article, which is great. Any comments I want, I will usually, once I've read it and summarized it, I'll put that in the comments. So then I have that for my own later, and I'll tag it appropriately as I need, right? I can, again, do tags, labels, flags, read or unread, and I can lock it if I want it as well. I don't want to labels. And yeah, again, this will round trip through Mac OS and give me an OCR PDF later that I can search even in Devon Think to go once the Mac version has done the OCR work. Now let's look at the, some of the stuff in email. I've got a couple things here. I have got a transistor FM receipt and the way I'm going to handle that, uh, you can't, it doesn't work to send it very well to, if I send it open in, it, open in doesn't really work very well. So I'm going to hit save as PDF and I'm going to save it. And then I'm going to clip the PDF to Devon Think and I'm going to click done and then I've got it in Devon Think. All right, there's the PDF of it. Perfect. This is searchable now for me. This will get this will OCR later. And usually I would tag it and I would put in receipts. If I can type receipts. And this is 2019. And then this will actually, once it syncs up with Mac OS, the automation on my Mac OS version will flip this around and file it for me automatically in my receipts. I've already done this because I recorded this twice, so I'm just going to delete this receipt because I don't need two copies of it. The other receipt that I have in here is Scanner Pro. This is my car repair. This is very simple. If I click on the PDF, which I've scanned with Scanner Pro, I open in and click the Devon Think, car repairs, and when I go back, we'll import my file. And there's my lovely PDF of my car repairs. All right, now let's capture. This is a podcast of Tim Ferriss and Neil Gaiman. And it's Safari. If I hit this little cloud download link, nothing happens. It doesn't really do anything. So here I'm going to click it or touch it. And I have downloaded optimal file for me, which I don't really want. And then in iCab, all I have to do is hold, hit download. And yes, I want to download that. And then this will now be in files for me. And it is in iCab. Now that I have this file, I can do that. Or I can tap it, I can open it, and I can clip the entire audio file to Devon Think. Now I'm back in Devon Think. Optimal. Right now let's save a YouTube video. So let's go over to YouTube, but I've already got one here. This is a Linus Text Tips one. I'm copy my link and I can do this at a Safari. So I'm going to go into Safari, paste that in. I don't care about the audio right now, so we'll just leave it. And I'm going to go to shortcuts. And so YouTube, if I pay, will let me download it or I can use shortcuts. So I'm going to use shortcuts and I can go download, download YouTube. It is grabbing it all. It is downloading it for me. And there are links to these shortcuts in the post that goes with this. So you don't need to try and rebuild it. And I will share it. And I'm going to clip the dev and think. And I'm going to give it a title. This is the 2017 ThinkPad versus 197 ThinkPad. And then I'm done. And then if I go over to dev and think, there we go. I've got my full video in there. And I could put in my URL because I still have my clipboard. And I could do anything else that I want to do with it again. In videos that I capture, and I actually wouldn't normally capture this line as text tip ones, 
um, I would put it get a time stamped, uh, you know, 21. They talked about men and women, or something like that. Uh, usually I'm finding some research at TED Talk, something like that. And this is how I would save it um, off the YouTube link. Now our final bit is adding things straight from Devon Think to go. And if I go in here, what I have is I hit the plus in the bottom corner. I have text. So to start with, let's just give it a body and a name. And I can put my URL. Again, I can put in my tags, my flags, my labels, anything like that. And hit next. And now I can format my note as rich text, formatted note, markdown, or plain text. Uh, I usually use markdown uh, because that's what I like. I just like plain text. And the thing about Devon Think and Devon Think to Go is that what you put in is what you get out. So if I put in a markdown note, I get a markdown note or plain text note back out, which is excellent. Next up is media. I'm going to delete this. So media, I have, you know, the basics, new photo, existing photo, photo from clipboard, last photo taken, video note. That's interesting. So if I do video note, you're actually seeing behind my iPad and now you're seeing me. So this is my actual iPad video. I could hit record. Um, although I'm not sure that's going to do my screencast, so I'm not going to hit record and I would cancel. And also with voice note, you can do the same thing. Notice in the center, the timer doesn't work right. I don't know why. And so once you finish those out, you just can save it. That's it. Bookmark, mildly deceiving. This is not just a bookmark. Um, yeah, go to title or URL. We put anything in there. Uh, URL, let's put this in. So it wants a URL, HTTP, curtismichael.ca. Perfect. This is like our share sheet. It's the bookmark, the web archive, the clutter-free, markdown and clutter-free. So yeah, do whatever you want here. Um, same thing, if you just have a link that you've got some somewhere else and you want to save it, this will do exactly what it did from the share sheet. Next up is sheet, and this is interesting. So let's say keyboard and wait, and I'll show you what this is. This is test keyboard wait thingy. Perfect. And now I literally have a spreadsheet. I can edit it and I can put in nine bridge and I could tell you it's 3.4 pounds. Done. I can add rows, you can add columns. This will import TSV and CSV files. Um, it does not do formulas though, so don't plan to do big formulas in there. And now back down to our plus, we also have tag. This is literally just like adding a tag. I don't even know why they have it, because um, you can just add any tag you want as you're sorting items. Tags, there you go. Group or folder. Um, because I'm in my global inbox, this will add the folder to my global inbox. Yeah, and then database. So database, let's go back out of this. I have a few databases here. I have personal, I have receipts and research. They're down in the left bottom corner. Um, if I was to add a new database here, this would be my test database. Done. So now I have a new test database. Um, this is kind of like the overarching storage method for um, Dev and Think. Whoa, all those things. I don't need that database. On Mac, you can actually locate these databases wherever you want. So I can put my, my my receipts database could be on an external drive, but it'll still sync back down to Mac or to iOS, iPad OS, iOS 13, right here. Ta-da, that's what you got. So there is Capture on Dev and Think to go. If I missed anything, if there's other ways that you can do Dev and Think to go specifically, I'm not talking really about the Mac OS version because we're gonna cover that next time in another future 3000 word post. If you liked it, hit subscribe below, I guess you can hit the bell, but I never hit the bell because I don't want all the notifications and you should be working. So don't hit the bell. Just hit subscribe, come back because I'm super good looking and cool and I've got nice hats. Almost all of them from Patagonia, actually. Um, you can also support the channel by going to curtismichael.ca slash Patreon. If you want to support the channel, there's a couple different tiers that get you some more stuff, some more videos and some more interaction with me. I'd love the support to help me out producing good videos on how to be productive for iOS, how to run a good business, and just how to be productive in general. Um, yeah, so without further ado, the next one you might see will be Devon Think 3 Capture. Well, that's an even bigger topic than this. So we'll see. Maybe it'll be a Statomic, because I'm going to be building some Statomic sites. So maybe it'll be developing Statomic on iPad. One of them. Thanks for watching. Have an awesome day. Don't fall in.